Hi, it's uh, Paul Beck with, um, I'm going to talk about uh, tipping points uh, today um, to my photographer, uh, Edward. Um, so, uh, tipping points in the climate system. So, um, we've changed the chemistry of the atmosphere. We've increased the greenhouse gases enough that we're getting trapping of more heat in the atmosphere. So the whole planet is warming, but it's warming very unevenly. The Arctic uh, region is warming, you know, high Arctic is warming six to eight times faster than the rest of the planet. So it's disrupted the jet stream system. It's causing extreme weather events. And, uh, you know, it looks like the uh, loss of Arctic sea ice and snow cover in um, the spring months is enough to amplify the warming so that we can start getting other feedback effects coming into place. So, you know, tipping points, uh, so, so uh, you know, this tree is a good analogy of tipping points. You know, nothing's happening, I'm cutting, I'm cutting, I'm cutting. So these are the changes that we're making to the uh, climate system. And eventually you reach a point where something major gives and then the whole, uh, the whole system changes irreversibly into another state. So, uh, the biggest concern I have is that uh, the methane gas emissions from the uh, Arctic, specifically the uh, terrestrial permafrost and the uh, Eastern Siberian Arctic Shelf, start coming up because the ocean is warming. Um, and, uh, you know, we're seeing loads of signs that things aren't right with the planet. We're seeing these large eruptions of methane causing holes in Siberia. We're seeing lots of bubbling coming up from the uh, Eastern Siberian Arctic Shelf. Uh, we're seeing s strange things, you know, we expect a large El Nino, and instead of that, you know, we get this massive pool of uh, warm water in the North Pacific, and just very, very recently, this water has been actually moving into the Arctic Ocean, this very, very warm water with temperature anomalies, 5 degrees, 6 degrees Celsius, or even larger, um, warmer than normal. Um, crossing into the Bering Strait. The uh, Pacific is is not as salty, so the water, the sea level is a little bit higher for the uh, Pacific. Also, the water is warmer, so it's higher. So we get, um, you know, you can think of it almost like a mini waterfall through the Bering Strait. So the water is flowing into the uh, Arctic Ocean. So it's all surrounding the sea ice, at least in the, uh, in, around the Beaufort Gyre and, uh, you know, it's undercutting the ice, um, and uh, you know the the uh, minimum extent seems to have happened, but it'll be interesting to see the regrowth because the uh, water is very warm. This water is going right over the eastern Siberian Arctic Shelf, so you know eventually, you know, if we get enough uh, melting of these sediments on the sea floor, then uh, you know we reach this uh, tipping point. Uh, we can get large amounts of methane coming up. Now, a lot of people think, well, it takes a long time for the heat to go down into the sediments. Uh, we don't have to worry about the methane. But, uh, you know, we're seeing lots of things that, uh, we're getting lots of surprises. So, you know, that's the uh, biggest concern. So, you know, so there can be a tipping point as I cut down this tree. I can have a heart attack and keel over or I can eventually get through the tree, or I started the movie too early and the tree is not going anywhere, so probably that's the case. Ah, well, even these things happen even to guys like Geraldo, right? So I guess I'll have to show the tree coming down in a separate video and that's give me a minute here, I don't want to fall on my foot. See what happens. Ah. Okay, so the tipping point hasn't occurred yet, but uh, I think we're getting pretty close. Okay, thanks, Edward.